Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TriStar Gym channel. Thank you all for tuning in. Audio is on. Button uh, button pushing skills are are up. And uh, I gave an intro again. I'm giving the intro again because I forgot one little button. Make it a big difference, obviously. Guys, thank you for tuning in. This episode is an episode on the Butterfly Guard and Butterfly Guard only. We're going to be talking about jiu-jitsu. So if you're into jiu-jitsu, if you're a new jiu-jitsu nerd like me, then stay tuned. If you're here only for MMA talk, actually, we're going to be talking about MMA. Does the butterfly guard work in MMA? Uh, what is the best guard? What situation? What are the pros and cons of butterfly guard? When should we use it? When should we not use it? And this special episode is promoting my new instructional video that I promised to put out. I promised to put out three, at least three instructionals in 2020. I'm going to aim for five, but I'm going to put out, I promise, three and I'm ready. It is January and the first one is out already. Use promo code promo code dynamic five promo code dynamic five and get five dollars off the dvd is 25 dollars. so if you use promo code dynamic five you get it for 20 dollars. the DV the video i shouldn't say it's a dvd it's a downloadable video it's 40 minutes long but it has so much content there's no dead time there's no chit chatter it's straight up concise detail after detail maneuver after maneuver solo drill after solo drill etc and you get it in 40 minutes. It's about a three-hour seminar. So I've given a lot of seminars in my life, and I always like to give in one instructional, I like to give the amount you would get in a seminar. So instead of spending $100 on a seminar, you spend $25 and you get it uh, in a video format, and you can review the details over and over again. I think it's far more um, uh, efficient. Okay, guys. Just a quick note about um, the butterfly guard, okay? The butterfly guard can, can, excuse me, it can transition to many other guards, such as single leg X, we call it Ashigurami, or single leg X, or any other type of inverted guard where you leg lock. I did not cover leg locks in this video. I did not flow from butterfly guard to leg locks. I hope to do a second butterfly guard where I do that. All the attacks I use were upper body attacks. Why? Because there's too much to cover in Butterfly Guard. The Butterfly Guard can chain you into so many different possibilities. It can bring you into leg locks or upper body submissions. I use in the first one upper body submissions. Why? Because I think the upper body submissions are the first ones you should learn. And they're the most fundamental. When my opponent resists my upper body attack, then I can flow into leg attacks. So um, I find the leg, leg attacks are super powerful, super important, but I want to use them for another DVD. This one has the key and super important upper body attacks. Okay, I teach in this uh, video, I teach you how to do the power slide. So how to fundamentally really go for the first sweep, the sumigeshi or the hasparge, elevator sweeps, turning your port partner over and putting him on his back and you got to do it in a dynamic and explosive manner the first drill i go over is how to create a pummeling scenario where you and your opponent you and your partner are in a dynamic situation and then you hit your butterfly guard in an instant that's the key to turning somebody over okay it's the timing butterfly guard relies a lot on timing and i developed a nice little drill where it helps you hit that butterfly guard sweep quickly as soon as you make contact with your opponent, you're going to slide into power slide, the power slide, you're going to go into power stack, and that's going to create a very powerful lifting force. A lot of time when you see a good butterfly guard sweep somebody, they take the guy off the mat completely. And to generate that force, you need two key components. And the two key components are power slide and power stack. Actually, it's a th there's three key components, I should say. You need that dynamic touch where you develop a... Uh, explosive in an instant type sweep as soon as i connect with my partner if we connect in a certain way i'm going to sweep right away and uh, i find that a lot of um players a lot of butterfly guard players the the not so good ones they try to grab onto you and force you into a sweep as opposed to hitting you real quickly in a dy dynamic uh way in this dvd i discuss a little bit about how you should start viewing the butterfly guard as a dynamic transition and not as a position. It's very hard for me to hold somebody in butterfly guard and then sweep them. I want to be fighting with you. And as soon as I get into butterfly guard, if I find the right, if I find myself in the right scenario, I'm going to shoot that sweep. Okay. So in this DVD, I um, talk about when you know your opponent, your opponent is ready to be swept or when you should flow to triangle or clamp guard or, or a, a arm pinch 
when you trap the shoulder and bring it into your chest, when should you flow to these uh, secondary positions? And um, I think I made it quite clear in the DVD. I rewatched it. I think it came out very well, very clear. Lots of gems in this video. And I'm sure that after just watching this video once, your butterfly guard game is going to be a lot better. Now, small disclaimer. This video is a bit too advanced for white belts. If you're a total beginner at white belt, this, this video is not for you. If you got three, four stripes, your white belt, you got three, four stripes, I think it's a good idea. Get the video because um, just the first three drills are going to make a difference in your game. The first three drills in the video will make a tremendous difference in your bottom game when you're playing on the bottom. If you're a blue belt or a black belt, you absolutely love this DVD, this uh, video. You will absolutely, absolutely love it. I guarantee you it'll make your jiu-jitsu better immediately. Just after watching it, there's a lot of things you you know and a lot of things you've never seen. And just adding that to the, your, your game will make a major, major difference. Okay, guys, with that said, let's uh, open up your comments and questions on the butterfly guard. Please go ahead. How to stop the smash pass from butterfly guard? Is that covered? Okay, so that's from Aaron Kuhn. Aaron Kuhn, I didn't go into... Uh, yeah, actually, I do I do go to, I talk about how to know the negative and positive side. So the side that I have your arm trapped, that's the positive side. That's the side I'm always looking for. Why do I call it the positive side? Because that's your initial thinking. When you grab onto somebody, the side in which you've trapped his arm, that's the side you want to shift your weight to. You want to throw him on that side. That's my initial thought. If he takes me to the other side, now he has the opportunity to smash past me. And yes, I do cover it in the DVD. I give one of the most powerful counters in the game and three variations of it. So if he takes me to the negative side, the side where he has base, I call it the negative side because that's a bad side for you. Now it's the bad side for you if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so at the preliminary level, there's one side that's very good for me and one side that's very bad for me. If he takes me to the bad side, I better know these counters. If I know these counters, now it's not the negative side, okay? But initially speaking, the man on top has a favorable side, the side where he can go to the opposite of his underhook. I do cover it in the video, and um, these counters, I use them well. I trust them dearly, and I think they work very, very well. Um, what else we got here? Should I counter the butterfly players with a teleport? That's from Mac. Mac, you might be joking. I'm not sure if you're joking, but there is a move called teleport, and I've actually uh, covered it uh, couple of years back on my channel where you kind of kick out and take your partners back so i'm pretty sure you're referring to the actual real move no you can't really teleport when we butterfly sweep butterfly uh, excuse me the teleport is more against a low single or you can do it against a partner who's inverting to his knees from side control so if you're a, if you're on top in side control and your partner's getting to his knees now's a good time to hit the teleport the teleport is not really effective when you're being swept with a butterfly guard sweep Trap, uh, thoughts on bear trap entry. That's from Matthew. Matthew, that's a very, very uh, strong transition. I do like to use butterfly guard to flow into uh, X guard, Ashigurami, or bear trap, as you call it. However, in this video, I did not cover lower body attacks. Can you, can you, Darce, if you're smaller than your opponent? That's from Robin. 23x um yes you can dars i like to use my forearm so i do dars bigger guys i use my forearm instead of trying to go all the way into a full uh, rear naked choke tight grip into a full mataleon i usually will use just my forearm it's plenty of reach and i actually prefer using the forearm even if the guy's smaller than me okay sometimes i do fold all the way in but most of the time i use a short forearm a grip i, I call it the short dars I was trying to buy, but didn't get a section to put the promo code in. That's from Legend Killer. Well, try it again, Legend Killer, because it's there. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled. There is a promo code. Maybe in your country, Shopify doesn't allow. I'm not sure what country you're in, but it definitely does work because the first, all the people who have been buying, all, almost everybody's using the promo code Dynamic5. Guys, type in Dynamic5, get $5 off my new instructional. Do you use reverse X feet positioning or traditional? That's from Aaron Kuhn. I use both. Okay, so Aaron Kuhn's asking, you know, you can cross your legs one way in the X card or you can cross your legs the other way. One of them, is, one side is good for sweeping. One side is good for getting into leg locks. I use both depending on what I want to do when I'm fighting my opponent. Typically, I always look to sweep first and then leg lock. 
when they counter my sweep, then I flow into a leg lock. I rarely flow into a leg lock as an initial attack. That's just how I organize my attacks. I feel more confident that way. Is butterfly guard effective against bigger opponents? That's from 35 Manny Boy. Manny Boy, let me tell you, butterfly guard is one of my favorite guards to use against a bigger opponent because I get them to base. And when they base, I could spin underneath, I can grab their arms, I could pummel myself into, I could pummel my legs into an Ashigurami. Lots of good stuff from there. I'm just going to take a quick sip here. Do you prefer the underhook or overhook from butterfly guard? That's from Ben. Ben, the underhook is where it's at. If we're talking no gi, with the gi, you can you can overhook and wrap the collar, which is great because now you have cross chokes. It's actually very difficult to pass and you have strong sweeps from the overhook. In my opinion, the no gi butterfly guard, and I'm talking about only no gi, okay? So don't throw me a thousand and one references where a gi guy sweeps with the overhook. You can sweep with the overhook in the gi. In no gi, the overhook for sweeping, in my opinion, is weak. It's not impossible to do. It's doable. I've done it. Many people do it. But if you look at it, statistically, it's the lower level type of sweep. You don't see it often. I show in my DVD, if you get stuck on the overhook side, how to hip heist and go for the back or trap uh, your partner in various ways. Okay, triangle. I use the overhook to flow to subs. I get them to base. I, f I sweep, but usually, typically, they're going to base. As they base, I sub them or I take their backs. I show you some some of my favorite go-to moves when I'm stuck using the under oh, when I'm stuck using the overhook. Initially, however, I'm always looking for underhook or double underhook. I have a tournament in 3 weeks. I'm going to use the butterfly hopefully. I like the guard. That's from Mac. Well, it's a great guard to have. It's a very aggressive guard. Does this shoulder pinch work as an entry for leg locks? when the guy posts and prevents the sweep. That's from Scientist Sam. Absolutely. The shoulder pinch, for those of you who don't know, especially in Nogi, it's one of the strongest ways to grab your opponent when you're on the bottom. It's a very, very aggressive uh, grip from the butterfly guard. Uh, Gordon Ryan just used it beautifully against Bushesha in the last Abu Dhabi. He did a beautiful sweep. The Denahar Death Squad, my trainer, he's very big on the pinch. In this instructional, I show a lot of nice details on the pinch. Common attacks you can use from the pinch, high percentage attacks, and I also I also demonstrate what I call the snake pit. When you're when you have the pinch and your partner is basing wide, I like to go to a maneuver I call the snake pit. It feels like if you if you ever had it done on you, it feels like you're stuck in a snake pit. You know, because I'm climbing my legs around the guy's neck as I'm pitching off the arm. It's just a great way to lock down your opponent, stop him from escaping or slipping out. Because a lot of times when you do the pinch and things are sweaty, that arm comes loose. I have a really good answer to that that I share in this video. And uh, for those of you who like to use the shoulder pinch, check it out. You will flow often to the snake pit and sub your opponent or trap him in a triangle. MMA Gym's recommendations in New York. That's from Arijat. Arijat, go to the Henzo Gracie Academy. They've produced many, many great fighters and world champions over the years, and they have an unbeatable jiu-jitsu program. Hey, coach, most BJJ schools have a wrestling day. I haven't seen BJJ combined with wrestling the way you start rolling on your videos. Have you considered releasing a BJJ wrestling video? That's from Ray Ray, Ray Ray, my man. Yes, actually, I will do eventually. I will do a takedown video. Absolutely. It's super crucial. And there's a lot of things that jiu-jitsu brings to the table. If you mix it with wrestling, it goes beautifully. Uh, lots of uh, interesting things out there um, that we've seen in MMA and in jiu-jitsu competitions. And I'll go over them and... Hopefully, it'll make for a super interesting video. When trapping your opponent's second arm, what grip do you prefer, wrist or tricep? That's from Ben. Ben, I actually go over it. I talk about how you trap the opponent's elbow with your hand and you trap your opponent's hand with your elbow. So it's a type of grip that I really like to use. I, th I think it's the strongest grip that I've seen over the years, and I do uh, go over it in my video. So I trap the elbow and the wrist. I go for both. Will it work in the streets? That's from Pietro Fonseca. Absolutely. If somebody gets on top of me in the street, as they're throwing me down or as they're giving me their energy, I will use butterfly guard. Absolutely. No doubt. The butterfly guard is about dynamic movement. I think of it as a transition. Whenever I use the butterfly guard, it's like a blink of an eye. I use it in a blink of an eye. My opponent tried to pin me on the ground and I use his pin energy to throw him. I don't think of it too much as a position. And I, and I start this video with a key drill 
that will help you develop that ability. And in my opinion, if you do that just for a, a week, your sweeps are going to go up immensely. Uh, what else we got here? We're talking about butterfly guard, guys. Only butterfly guard. If you're not interested in jujitsu, it's not your thing. This episode is not for you. This is going to be one of those episodes for us martial arts jujitsu nerds. We're going to be talking about a specific guard today, the butterfly guard. Hi, is Marcelo Garcia's butterfly guard the best in the world? That's from Eugene. Well, I'll tell you something. It, when it comes to sweeping, I would say yes. When it comes to overall offense, I would say no. I would think that I would say that Gordon Ryan's butterfly guard, and I've trained with both of them, and I've been in both their butterfly guards. Uh, Ryan's Ryan uh, Gordon Ryan's butterfly guard is scarier, in my opinion, and I'll tell you why. Because he has so many subs from there. Um, with with Marcelo, Marcelo is just a, such a great, powerful sweeper. But with Ryan, with Gordon Ryan, I feel like I'm fighting for my life because I'm going to get subbed now. Like, he has so many scary attacks where he flows into the leg locks that it's like, you know, you're always on red alert, red alert. This guy's about to break your leg. Like, jump out of here. Like, escape. Whereas with Marcelo, you get swept. It's it, Yeah, it's bad. You got swept. But you're not getting subbed most of the time. And he has some nice subs he does. You know, he does do the reverse armbar. He does do the triangle. But he doesn't flow into leg locks. Marcelo Garcia never goes for the leg locks. Not, he doesn't go for knee bar. He doesn't go for toe hold. He doesn't go for heel hook. So I only have to goaltend the upper body, which is a lot easier. It takes a lot off my mind. Uh, of course, uh, Marcelo goes for the guillotine also from the butterfly guard. But when you look at Gordon Ryan's guard, he goes for the guillotine. He goes for the reverse armbar. He goes for the, the sweeps, of course. And he goes for the leg locks, both knee bars, toe holds, and heel hooks. There's so much to goaltend that you you have what I call helmet fire. You know, you're constantly uh, trying to stop. Uh, you're trying to constantly carry all these plates. You know, there's just too many things to watch out for. Whereas with Marcelo, you got to re be really careful of your neck and upper body. Now, in the butterfly guard, if you're only attacking my upper body, it's actually hard to finish the reverse armbar. I rarely ever finish it and you rarely ever see it to be finished. Usually it transitions into a sweep. Or a leg lock entry. So with Marcelo, you really have to just be careful for the guillotine. There's not much else. And of course, Marcelo doesn't do Kimura. Ryan, Gordon Ryan does do Kimura. So I feel like with Gordon Ryan's guard, it's just too many traps. You're constantly on the defense. And uh, that's why I would say he's, his guard is more effective, more powerful. Uh, but in terms of sweeps, just getting turned over, Marcelo is the best. Coach, glad to catch you live. How are you, my friend? That's from Luka Martinovic. Luka Martinovic. Thank you, my buddy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I uh, created, you missed it. If you missed the early part of the episode, again, I started with no sound. How many times is this going to happen? I don't know. People probably think I do it on purpose. I don't. I forgot to push the little button here. Again, you uh, button masters have much to teach me. I'm still a very green. However, I'm very happy that I'm able to put up a new mic and uh, I, I probably went like 10 episodes without screwing up the sound so it's, it's getting better hey coach how helpful would an instructional such as yours be to someone like myself that only has two classes available a week i would like to drill with a partner garrett that would be that's you know if you only have two classes available some some people don't know that a lot of jiu-jitsu schools are offering jiu-jitsu classes only two or three times a week like uh, try star students they don't understand because they're jiu-jitsu all day long every single day there's like three four classes sometimes sometimes two sometimes three sometimes four classes four sessions of jiu-jitsu people coming in for classes there's all non-stop jiu-jitsu all day long and some communities they only have one small club and the club only teaches twice a week absolutely get the instructional find a friend like when i started do, doing jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu was very unpopular at the time uh, my trainer only taught twice a week but i would train every single day i was just I was bit by the bug, you know, I was really obsessed with all martial arts. So I was with that weirdo who made his own mat at home. I couldn't even afford a mat. I bought a mat later on, but I took covers and I made a mat and I would call my neighbors, you know, they would come, like, come do jujitsu. And they're like, what the hell is this? And I would like buy DVDs, instructionals, and look where I am today. You know, for sure, later on, I invested more time and energy and I traveled and I did seminars as a student, you know, I traveled to New York and all that. However, um, learning from instructionals did help me get on that road. It did help me. Uh, trust me, you just watch the video and you can be like, holy moly, I'm already better. 
Like I just, it increases your understanding. And uh, absolutely, if you only have access to jujitsu class twice a week, the video will make a greater impact on your uh, game. What's the best body type for using butterfly guard? That's from 35 Money Boy. Money Boy, you got some good questions today. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, I believe all butterfly, uh, all body types work well with butterfly guard. However, if you're shorter and stockier, it's great for sweeping. You're gonna have more power sweeping. If you're more long and lanky, you're gonna end up using the guillotine and triangle more often. If you're medium size, you're gonna probably use both. Like I'm medium size, so I do it all. Um, later on in my next DVD, I'm gonna talk a lot about flowing into leg locks. And I feel that both players, both the short and tall player will have um, uh, an easy way to flow into leg locks. However, if you're a shorter guy, it's really good for sweeping. I find that the shorter stockier guys are much better at launching people in the air. Whereas the taller guys, when they launch people in the air, they often base more. And from there you attack and you'll see them do a lot of triangles. So if you look at Braulio Stima's butterfly guard, he has a great one. He oftentimes flows to a triangle. He'll attempt a butterfly sweep as you base. He traps you with a triangle. I actually go over it in this instructional. You will see the triangle combo. And who has a better triangle than Braulio Estima? Nobody. But look at his legs. You know, And that's another great black belt that I've had a chance. I've had the privilege to work with actually quite a long time. Me and him actually became quite good friends, me and... Uh, uh, Braulio, but his triangles, man, his triangles are so phenomenal. He catches them all the time. I can't count you how many times I've seen Braulio catch somebody with a triangle, both upper body uh, arm triangles and leg triangles. He's just phenomenal. But you see that typically in a long, lanky, tall person. Coach, I'm bigger and want to learn MMA. How can I make a debut on your gym? That's from Ayub. Ayub, come down to my gym and try out. Come and work out with us and see if uh, it's a good fit for you. If I come across a stronger opponent on my feet, is it smart to pull into butterfly guard? That's from Mac. No, personally, if we're talking about fighting in the street, I wouldn't pull guard in any way. Okay, I would only use butterfly guard if my opponent forces me to the ground and then I can use his momentum and energy to flip him over. Okay, that's the appropriate time of butterfly guard. See, you're thinking of butterfly guard as a position. Hey, should I pull him down and establish this position? I don't see butterfly guard this way. Okay, that's why I titled the video Dynamic Butterfly Guard. I want you guys to move away from that kind of thinking. Think of the butterfly guard as a transition or a counter to your opponent's aggressive attack. If he doesn't attack me aggressively, I will not try to use butterfly guard. If I'm in a street fight with a bigger person, I'll probably try to body lock him or take him down in a very various amount of ways, but I wouldn't pull guard, okay? Not in a street fight. Does your butterfly guard differ from that of DDS? Do you have a similar approach? By DD, That's from Kami. Kami, DDS means, for those of you who don't know, it means Denahar Death Squad. I'm a black belt from the uh, John Denahar, so I like to think of myself as part of the style. You know, Obviously, I train heavily on, uh, under John for many, many years, and a lot of my students still go to New York. Absolutely, we have an extremely similar style. And uh, over the years, I, I also kind of made it my way You know, because I feel that uh, there's so many ways to skin a cat. Even many, many black belts that work under John have their own way of doing things. He shows us a variety of methods, a variety of uh, approaches, and then you kind of favor your own. You know, John really knows, obviously he knows every position, but he knows every variation of every position. And he'll sometimes recommend you a certain variation and your training partner another variation. Why? Because of your body type, your personality, the rest of your game, how it fits into the rest of your game. So he really has a holistic approach which I absolutely love. So yes, absolutely. I have I, I copy my style from his, right? I'm his student. So uh, much of my techniques come from John. What's up, Firas? You know how to dance the Becky. That's from Jojo Jones. Actually, no, I've never, I'm, no, I'm Lebanese. For those of you who don't know, it's a Lebanese dance. The Debeke is a Lebanese dance. Unfortunately, I've never been taught. I don't know the Debeke, my friend. I'm, I would disappoint you on the dance floor. Uh, butterfly or reverse de la Hiva against a smash passer. That's from Aaron, uh, Aru, 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 um, Aru, both. It all depends on the situation. Learn both. Like if you look at my DVDs that I released, I did, I released lockdown, reverse de la Hiva lockdown, the guard pass prevention, and now the butterfly guard. I believe you need all three. If you have all these three, your game is going to be solid. Okay. If you have all these three, 
Just get these three DVDs. They're both, they're all, excuse me, all three of them are 40 minutes long. But concise and jam-packed with information. It's a, each video is about a seminar, what you would get in a seminar. And uh, no, no long speeches, just straight up to the details and maneuvers. It's super concise, jam full of information. Hey, Faraz, got any questions on good gyms for beginners in the GTA? That's from Pawan. Pawan, I don't know what GTA means. Um, not sure what you mean by that area. I have one as for now. I'm not sure what you mean by that. What else we got here? Okay, guys, don't forget we're doing a video only on Butterfly Guard. So if you're not interested in Butterfly Guard training, Jiu-Jitsu, this video is not for you. You might want to skip this episode. But for those of you who want to nerd out on Jiu-Jitsu, like I love to do, hang out here with me. And we're going to be talking everything has to do with Butterfly Guard. Max says, Nikki Rhodes travels longer than that to get there every day. And I think oh, you're replying to someone else. Okay, guys. We have... Oh, GTA is Greater Toronto Area. Okay, sorry, my friend. My apologies. I'm not familiar with that term. What else we got here, guys? Let's keep talking about the Butterfly Guard. What is the best overall defense against Butterfly Guard? That's from Esner Dennis. Esner, I would say number one defense is guillotine. If you have a crazy good guillotine game, they fear shooting in your legs. But you gotta, there's, there are levels to guillotine. Like I've seen uh, really great guillotiners go up against really good wrestlers, and the guillotiners have a major advantage. But I'm talking about the crazy good guillotiners, not the average guillotiners. Not the so-so, I get a guillotine every so often, but the killer guillotiners, the guys who are just, masters of guillotine and fyi guys that's why i i'm very very uh, adamant about the guillotine i work a tremendous amount of guillotine like I, I i guillotine i use guillotine every single time i roll i don't use the guillotine sometimes i use the guillotine all the time like i'm a guillotine uh, pro like I, I guillotine all the time all the time all the time all the time guillotine is where it's at now if you have a great guillotine obviously you want to learn to sprawl and all that but I'm talking about strictly jiu-jitsu attacks. After that, I would say butterfly guard is super important because as they're taking me down, I use them to flip. I flip them. But if I had to flip them over, I'd rather use the guillotine to flip them over and because the guillotine, not only is it a more powerful sweep because the guillotine, guys, don't be, don't kid yourself. The guillotine is a powerful way to take a guy who's on top of you and put him underneath you to turn him over. And oftentimes, I'll use a butterfly hook. Beautiful. The guillotine is money. The guillotine is a great sweeping uh, grip. But obviously, you can finish your opponent with the guillotine. It's the second, statistically speaking, it's the second most common submission in MMA. It's a great sweep, a grip for sweeping, and it's a great way to finish your opponent. So you have that double, uh, you know, two birds, you're hitting two birds with one stone. You're attacking your opponent in two ways. A third thing the guillotine does is sometimes it just gasses your opponent out. So let's say I flip you over with the guillotine and I'm still choking you. I'm on top, I'm still choking you. And you get out of the guillotine. Well, one, I'm on top of you now, but two, you're dying for air. Because even if the guillotine didn't finish you, it sucked the life out of you, man. It drained your energy. And then I'll start passing, I'll start attacking you, and you, the guy's behind on air. His air supply is really low. And you see them gasping and just trying to survive. It kind of weakens them, it sweeps them, it chokes them. It, it's a phenomenal uh, attack. Uh, should I make... Uh, should I make a one-hour drive to Henzo's in New York City? Is it is the best gym? You don't know. Just don't know if it's worth it. That's from Wildcats. Wildcats, go. Don't ask again, okay? You have to go. That's an order. If you can drive to New York, go to New York. It's the greatest jiu-jitsu place in the world. Uh, don't miss out. You absolutely need to go. Okay, guys. We are covering the butterfly guard nerding out on the butterfly guard i'll open it up to any other guard any other guard you guys want to talk about uh i'm also willing to compare it to butterfly guard your instructional with silver fox completely improved my jiu-jitsu that's from wild okay thank you my man and you know what uh, if you guys get a chance to pick up silver fox material he's amazing you know his jiu-jitsu is just a1 plus how do butterfly guard work against the cage in mma that's from osama zaid 
If you're a butterfly guard and you're pinched up against the fence, it's better to just try to get up. The butterfly guard is great because your feet are on the floor. Um, I wouldn't try to sweep too much if my back was up against the cage because I need I need that space to create force. Okay, so oftentimes if I'm in butterfly guard and the guy takes me up to against the fence, what I try to do is I'll use a partial sweep when they base. I just kind of stand up. I hip heist and get up to my feet. I actually cover the hip heist in this uh, instructional, but I don't do it against the fence, but it's the same exact principle. Rubber guard. Okay, so rubber guard is a great guard. It's a great guard when somebody's trying to hold you down. He's in your closed guard and he just wants to hold your hips down. He doesn't want you to open your guard. Rubber guard is a great way to flow in uh, counter that type of uh, athlete. You know, the lay and pray guy who just wants to sit in your guard and kind of hold you down. He knows your jiu-jitsu is good. He wants to stop you from doing armbar triangle omoplata. So what does he do? He kind of hugs your hips. I do something called the locked guard, which is very different to the butterfly guard. It requires a lot less flexibility, and I feel it's it's I feel it very it's a very strong guard. I do it a different way. I don't use Williams guard as much. For those of you who don't know, Williams guard is another type of um, tight close guard where you grab your own leg. I have a variation that I kind of developed on my own that I find is very safe and super effective in MMA. However. Um, I haven't really done a video on it. I haven't tried to make it popular, but it's something that I use very often. Who has the best guillotine in UFC? That's from Shadow. That's a good question. You know, I think um, maybe uh, Oliveira. Oliveira has a great guillotine, fantastic guillotine. I also like Nick Lentz's guillotine. He's got a very good arm in guillotine. Who else has got a great guillotine choke? Oh, there's Al Alvi Juarez. Um, he uh, he also has a good guillotine. There's a lot actually. There's a lot of good guillotiners. I'm just uh, it's not coming in my mind. But there's oh you know Nate Diaz has a phenomenal guillotine actually. That was one contrast I always made between Nick and Nate. Nick never goes for guillotine yet. Nate has a devastating guillotine, a very very effective guillotine. For those who don't remember, he guillotined uh, Jim Miller uh, in the past with a phenomenal high elbow guillotine. Uh, we have a super chat. This is from Saliman. Salam for us, Habibi. Please compare the contrast rubber guard to butterfly guard. Please discuss Dwayne Ludwig's bang Muay Thai system. Assalamu alaikum. That's from Saliman Muhammad. Muhammad. And uh, yeah, listen, I was just talking about butterfly guard. Butterfly guard, uh, excuse me, uh, rubber guard is really good for when a guy's trying to stuff your guard. He's kind of trying to uh, stall your chokes and your arm bars and your triangle chokes. Now, I don't go to butterfly guard when a guy's holding my hips down and hugging them. Then I go to lock guard or a type of rubber guard. Rubber guard is strong when your back's on the mat. Butterfly guard is very weak when your back is flat on the mat. So when I use butterfly guard is when I'm able to sit up. If I'm unable to sit up and get my back off the ground, by the way, I, I cover this in the instructional, I will uh, avoid the butterfly guard. So if I feel like I'm getting forced to my back, I take my butterfly hooks out and I wrap up my closed guard. Do not use butterfly guard when your back is on the mat. You have to be in a seated position. Okay, so those are the two contra contrasting uh, key elements. Rubber guard is good when you're flat on your back, not very good when your opponent is posturing up. Butterfly guard is very good for when your opponent is posturing up out of your guard. Now is the time to use butterfly guard. So the two go together. You know, they're two complementary guards. Not one is better than the other. They both work together. Okay. Now you ask me about Bain, uh, Dwayne Ludwig's uh, Bang Muay Thai system. Look, I, uh, I've, I've seen Bang work. You know, I, I've, I've done a seminar with Bang many years ago. And uh, his system is phenomenal. I haven't reviewed his online program. Uh, however, I'm very familiar with his techniques. And I would say it's really good. That kind of style is very personal. If you like that kind of style... It's good for you. Not everybody fights that way. So you have to try it out and see if it fits your personality, your your ability, your talents. Okay, that's really, really comes down to it. It's a very particular style. But Bang Lugwit definitely knows what he's doing. Anything he teaches is really, really good. It's just a question of does it fit for you. I recommend you try it and uh, decide for yourself. Brian Ortega, phenomenal guillotine. That's from Cami. Absolutely. Why did I forget Brian Ortega? Well, I get hit in the head quite a bit uh, during the week, so I apologize. Of course, Brian Ortega should have been the first guy I mentioned. Phenomenal guillotine expert. 
a true master of the guillotine choke. He's done it time and time again. And, of course, the Anaconda, the Darcy. He's got a great choke game. Amazing. And, of course, they don't call him T-City for nothing. He's got a phenomenal triangle game as well. Coach Jabi, please do a video on guard you just mentioned. That's from Enzar. Maybe uh, you're talking about the lock guard, maybe in the distant future. I get smash pass all the time. Do you prefer Z guard or butterfly guard with smash passers? That's from Hoodlum. Hoodlum, listen, go check out my uh, Zahabi's favorite guard pass prevention video. In that video, I cover the shotgun armbar. Go to that video. Go to the section of shotgun armbar. Memorize it. Drill it for two weeks. After two weeks, you will never be smash passed again. I rarely ever get smash pass, and I roll. I have the be some of the best smash passers in the game in, in my gym. I rarely ever get smash pass. I fear the smash pass. If they get past my shotgun bar arm bar because I, I was like asleep at the wheel for a second, and they get tight on my grip, I start to now it's I, I can get out, but it takes a lot of energy, and I don't like being put in those positions. I have a strong shotgun arm bar. Why specifically? Because I hate getting past by smash passers. So I believe that this, the shotgun armbar is the best answer to this uh, problem of the smash passer. Maybe even though you don't have a smash passer in your gym. There are not that many in jiu-jitsu. You know, there, there are some. They, of course, no, I shouldn't say that. There are many in jiu-jitsu. Let me take that back. But some gyms don't have many. Sometimes gyms, like, uh, you know, certain style of coaches, they teach only standing passing or they don't teach the smash passing because they're not smash passers themselves, okay? Now, I do smash passing as well. I like to stand up passing, standing up, and smash passing. I do both. I love body lock passing. I absolutely love it, especially because it's no gi. I do a lot of no gi, but a lot of gi grapplers, some of them avoid smash passing totally. They think it's a power move, okay? Different schools of thought. If you don't have good smash passers in your gym, Learn the shotgun armbar anyway, because one day I guarantee you, you're going to meet a grappler who's a great smash passer because they're there. They exist. And if you don't have a good shotgun armbar, you're going to get crushed. Make sure you know your shotgun armbar. What's a smash passer? That's from Ibrahima. Somebody who kind of like, as he's passing you, he body locks you or pins you in such a forceful manner and it feels like you're being smashed into the ground. They use a very heavy top pressure. They're on their knees. They're on their knees or on their toes, very low to the ground. And they're applying lots of pressure and just trying to flatten you like a pancake, okay? Contrast that with a stand-up passer. A stand-up passer is kind of using toriandos. He's throwing your legs from one side to the other and he's trying to establish a knee on belly or side control in a standing side-to-side -side fashion. He's trying to use speed and redirection to pass you as, as opposed to, excuse me, just using his body weight pr pr primarily, Thoughts on worm guard in gi? That's from 35 Manny Boy. Look, worm guard in gi is one of the one of the reasons why I stopped doing gi. When worm guard became a thing, I found it so um it killed the action. Like I was already not super in love with the gi, but worm guard, galaxy guard, rope, these these guards where you tie yourself in would stall the matches so bad I could no longer watch gi matches. Um I I no longer was interested in learning these things for two reasons. One it's boring. Two, if you try to wrap my shirt, let's say we were in a fight in the street, and this is how my mind works, so I apologize if your mind doesn't work that way and it sounds kind of crazy. I always, whenever I learn something, I was thinking, how would I use this in a street fight? If we were in a fight and you wrapped your foot around my jacket, let's say I was wearing a jacket and you're using it as a gi, because that's one argument why I did gi. What if one day you're fighting and the guy's wearing a jacket? Wouldn't you be able to choke him with it, sweep him with it? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Now, probably most fights occur when you're not wearing a jacket, but let's say one day you get into a fight and the guy's wearing a jacket. It happened to me once. I got into a little uh, little thing with a guy and I was wearing a jacket and he wasn't. And uh, look, it was one of those things I had to kick the guy out of a kick, kick a guy out of somewhere and he didn't want to go and I had to persuade him to go. It wasn't really a fight because it was a one-sided affair. I took the guy down and put him in a choke. Now, when I choked the guy, I was wearing a heavy winter coat, a double coat. I was wearing two coats. It was this weird winter jacket that I have. And for those of you who wonder why I have a double coat, I live in Canada. It's, it's super cold. Sometimes it gets to minus 40. 
So I had this double coat. Now, again, it wasn't really a fight because the guy was refusing to leave a certain area and I was, you know, I had to get him out of that area and I just, I just took him down and I wrapped him up and I put him in a rear naked. Now, when I put him in a rear naked, I put him to sleep, but my coat was so thick that it didn't put the blood choke on like I'm used to blood choking somebody. It kind of like put it on, but it wasn't as deep. So I put the guy in a choke and, you know, he went out, but he didn't go out, out. He went out, and as I turned around, he came back up, and I was surprised. I was really, really surprised. And then later, I was thinking to myself, I should have put him in Ezekiel. I should have grabbed my sleeve and put him in a choke, in a gi choke. So that was one instance, one instance where gi training would have come in handy. Now, worm guard and all that stuff, if I was ever fighting with you and you're wrapping my jacket around your, your leg, I'm just going to punch you. Like, I was just going to punch you three, four times, and you, the worm guard wouldn't work in a street scenario is what I'm trying to say. Whereas gi, in certain elements of the gi, would work. That's why I believe, I always tell my my purple belts and brown belts, when you want to get your black belt, you're going to have to do some gi. You don't have to be the master of the gi, but you got to know cross choke, Ezekiel, you got to know certain uh, grip breaks. What if somebody grabs my jacket once upon a time, one day and I have to break his grip? Well, you got to know how to break grips. What if I'm wearing pants and the guy grabs my pants while we're fighting? Well, I got to know how to break those grips. I got to know how to deal with them. I got to know how to break... Um, uh, spider guard grips. But these things, in my opinion, don't take long to learn. They don't. They're really simple. So for my black belts, all I require is basic gi grips, attacks, gi chokes, and very basic gi counter grips. Okay, so I don't go deep in the game because if you go too deep in the game, in my opinion, it's just not realistic anymore for fighting. If you want to be an IBGGF superstar, by all means, I have nothing against worm guard guys. Uh, for you worm guard experts, I salute you. You know That's your game. It's just for me, it's not interesting. For me, it's not really uh, exciting for me to learn. So um, that's my opinion on that. It's good if you like IBJJF, but if you're like me and you like more uh, realistic fighting, I prefer uh, just the basics of the gi and mostly no gi. Can you choke with a hood too? Uh, that's from JCB. JCB, if somebody's wearing a hoodie, can I choke him? Or if I'm wearing a hoodie, can I choke him? I'll answer both. You can do t-shirt chokes. So a hoodie, you can choke somebody with a hoodie. Look, in my opinion, those chokes are good, but they're a bit more fancy than realistic. I don't have a lot of experience with them. So what they do is sometimes they grab the bottom end of the guy's shirt and they wrap it around his neck. I can't tell you I've ever tried it for real. Like I've seen them. I've never tried it for real. So for me, let me put a question mark on there. I don't know. Let me just say that. I'd rather say I don't know than, than say they're more um, playful maneuvers that people kind of play around with, okay? Can I use my own shirt if I was wearing a hoodie to choke somebody? That I think, yes. I would use Ezekiel. I would use Ezekiel where you grab your own sleeve. I feel that it would be enough material for me to choke you. Um, however, it's very unlikely that I would resort to that, okay? <clears throat> What do you think of Damian Maya's butterfly guard passing in UFC? That's from Lino, Lino MMA. Well, he's got, first of all, he's got a great uh, butterfly guard on the bottom as well. He used it against uh, Ben Askren. His passing butterfly guard is also actually really, really good. I can't think of anybody who even got close to sweeping him with butterfly guard just because he obviously understands butterfly guard super well and he can pass it. He can, he, his jiu-jitsu is head, head and shoulders above almost anybody's ever fought in UFC. Anybody else? Oh, all right, uh, we got a super chat. Hey, coach, I appreciate you very much. Your insights have made me have made the biggest difference. I live in New York City. Maybe one day I'll come up to Montreal. Thank you, sir. That's from Monkey. Uh, Monchi, thank you, man. I look forward to your visit. Make sure to let me know that you're one of my followers here on YouTube, and um, me and you'll have a nice role. What's the most useless card for street fighting? That's from Lanky Jab. Uh, the most useless card. That's a good question. Listen, I wouldn't say it's the most useless guard, but one of the most dangerous guards to go to, I would say, is deep half guard. Like, obviously, your face is exposed, and you're just going to get punched. Like, unless you're really slick at deep half guard. Like, the, the deep half guard masters, I believe it can work. 
The blue belts who try to use deep half guard, eesh, you might get really badly hurt. If the guy on top of you has good balance and is just a good athletic, explosive person, it can really hurt you. I believe that you should use deep half guard as a transition and not a position. So if you use it as a transition, I'm all with you. But you got to be an expert in deep half guard. I personally rarely ever go to deep half guard. And I've done it. I've drilled it. I've used it in the past. It's not my go-to. It's not my top favorites. Interestingly enough, we saw Diego Ferreira uh, fight against um, Anthony Pettis. Anthony Pettis flowed to deep half guard and the bell rang. But he kind of got stuck a little bit in deep half guard. He got stuck on the bottom. He flowed to deep half and he kind of got a little bit stuck. And I think Diego, Diego Ferreira was getting lined up to throw some strikes and the round ended. But not a great position, not a great place to be, in my opinion. Most easy, most easiest part of butterfly guard to shut down. That's from da Daniel. Uh, look, I feel that um, when my opponent goes to uh, over under, if I can underhook his leg, so his butterfly hooks, I put my arm on the ground and block one of his legs. I feel it makes it very hard for him to sweep me. That's one of my favorite counters uh, for the guy. That's why you, you when you butterfly guard sweep, it's got to be dynamic. I don't give the guy chance to do anything. So we're fighting, and as soon as I grab him. I'm gone. He won't have time to put his arm in because there are many good counters to butterfly guard sweep if you use it as a position. That's why the most important drill for butterfly guard, I start off the DVD. I shouldn't call it DVD. It's a download. I start off this instructional download with the dynamic butterfly guard drill. I teach you how to pummel your way into a butterfly guard sweep, never settling in the butterfly guard uh, and to grab your opponent and give him full warning that you're going to try to sweep him now. That's not how butterfly guard in my opinion, is uh, most effective. Another super chap here. That's from This one is from Guam Tech. Hey, coach, if you had only one gift or lesson to give to the world, what would it be? Uh, it would be about butterfly guard. Check out my butterfly guard. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Guam Tech, that's off topic. Great question, but uh, off topic, my friend. Today, we're talking about BJJ, Jiu-Jitsu, and specifically guard. I'm not getting better at BJJ after two years. What should I do? Is it the gym? That's from Mansur Nawabi. Well, after two years of jiu-jitsu, you should definitely be a lot better. Check out my instructional and see, is that kind of instructional uh, instruction you're used to? If it's not, change gym, okay? You should have high-level instruction. BJJ is very well known. It's all over the world. There are great instructors all over the world. Make sure you're getting top, top quality jiu-jitsu. If that's not the trouble, if you are getting top quality jiu-jitsu, Assess your athleticism. Is your athleticism subpar? If so, consider a conditioning and training uh, conditioning program, physical uh, conditioning. Okay. What do you think about the Queen's Guard? Their uniform, optimal for combat, outdated. That's from Phil. That's from Phil Engerson. The Queen's Guard. Hmm. And I do think they look funny. It doesn't look like their attire is ready for combat. I would change that up if I were them. Coach Zahabi, what are the best guards for MMA? That's from Let Me Chill. Let Me Chill. I like Close Guard, Open Guard, Butterfly Guard, and yes, Inverted Guard, but only as a transition. Leg Lock Guards. All the Ashi Grammys. I like those things. Those are my favorite guards for MMA. Conditioning instruction coming. That's from Kerry. Kerry, maybe, maybe in the future. Uh, right now, I'm hoping to do my next one as a striking instructional. Uh, but it will have some conditioning elements because striking, for me, striking and conditioning is super. Um, they both go together. You shouldn't train one without the other. Ryan Hallgard, Ryan Hallgard, care. Listen, I've rolled with Ryan, Hard many Ryan Hall many times. He has one of the greatest pound for pound guards in the world. So check out his instructionals because his guard game is light years ahead of most people, most elite grapplers. Like he's a phenomenal, phenomenal jiu-jitsu master and uh, his guard is probably the most dangerous or one of the most dangerous guards in the world. Do you use half guard for MMA? That's from Asvaldo. Unless I'm forced to half guard, I will avoid half guard. Uh, the only other time I will induce a half guard, I'll go to half guard on purpose, is if the guy I'm fighting is a better striker. Like maybe he's he's a he's he's more of a striker. Like my jiu-jitsu is way better than his. Like he's very good at striking or he's very good at wrestling, and his jiu-jitsu is like blue belt level or purple belt level. And if we lock up in half guard, my jiu-jitsu is so much better than his that I'm gonna punish him from there. 
Uh, but if he's a very good, like let's say I was fighting a Damian Meyer or something, I wouldn't go to half guard because I feel the top guy has an advantage in a fight. So the only time I make that exception, well, I'll purposely go to half guard is if like I'm fighting a guy who's more of a sprawl and brawl. He's a striker. Like he, he wants nothing to do with me on the ground. I'm way too good for him on the ground. Then I'll jump to half guard if I have to. Super chat. What is the invention that Elio Gracie did in BJJ? I think you mean what innovations did he bring? I think he brought innovations in almost all the realms. He he just refined the techniques. Instead of following tradition, he said, "Look, let's figure out, let's tinker around with these submissions and figure out exactly which ones work best." Whereas opposed to the Gen Japanese mentality, it was like, "Whatever my master taught me, I'm going to do it exactly like he taught me." And I can't try to improve on him because he, obviously my master is far greater than me. And he knows everything and I know nothing. They kind of kept this humble attitude. Which a humble attitude is good, but you could be too humble that you don't open your eyes to seeing that, hey, maybe I've surpassed my trainer. Maybe I, maybe at least in one area. I have students of mine that are better at armbar than me. I have students of mine that are better at back take than me because they work that position so much. And now I ask them to teach me their details. Or maybe... They're just as good as I am, but they know one thing or two that I don't. They've developed it over time. So I feel that no one, just because a guy's better doesn't mean he's better at every single position or he knows everything about fighting just because he came out on top. You could be a great fighter, but not know much about body shots. And you could learn body shots from somebody who's a good, good body puncher and improve as a fighter. I like that attitude. Try to learn from everyone. I heard that Luta Livre is more effective than BJJ. That's from Khabib. Uh, Khabib Alvarez. Look, Khabib, if that's true, who won the last 10 years in Abu Dhabi? The ADCC tournaments. Who won them? I'm waiting for your response. Oh, what? No, no Luta Livre, guys? So how did you hear it's better? Who told you this? Kind of nonsense, my friend. Now look, Luta Livre, they could be a great Luta Livre guy out there. I absolutely believe that because, you know, they're basically grappling is grappling. Everybody's learning grappling from everybody. You can call it what you want. You can call it Krav Maga. You can call it uh, A, B, C, D, D, Ground Taekwondo. You can call it Ground Karate. I don't care what you call it. But really, what did you learn? You studied from some grapplers, Jiu-Jitsu guys, Sambo guys. The guys have been around forever. You picked it up. You mishmashed it with other arts. And basically, you're doing the same thing everybody else is in a different way. Yet you label it very differently. Like, I've seen guys call themselves Krav Maga when they spar or fight, they're doing MMA. Like, where's the Krav Maga part? Where's the part I don't know? Where's the part that you bring in? Now, I'm not saying uh, these martial arts don't work, but they, they prefer to, they, they, they're constantly training against knives and guns. And I've never, I never done that, by the way. I have actually, no, I shouldn't say that. I have, I have done some knife training. Quick little story here. GSP comes into the gym with these knives that are plastic knives that when, when you make contact, they light up and they buzz. They go bam, bam. So if you get a cut, it makes a distinctive buzzing sound and the light flashes. I was so excited. I'm like, let's get into a knife fight. I've always wanted to do knife fighting. I wish I recorded it. I should do a video on knife fighting. That's a good video to do. Now, what happened? We didn't do any Krav Maga stuff. Like nobody was grabbing the arm or the knife. I got to be honest with you. I'm not attacking any martial art out there. I'm just telling you what happened. We look like boxers trying to jab each other. That's what we look like. And look, I don't want to spoiler alert here, but uh, <clears throat> your Lebanese friend here did some very good knife fighting. Actually took out a few guys. But I used footwork and a lot of boxing. A lot of boxing maneuvers, slipping, footwork. Everything I learned in boxing is what came out that day. Why? Because I was using kind of a jab. You know, I actually carried the knife. I'm right-handed, but I was holding the knife in my left hand, my jabbing side. And I, I did switch hand. I was switching hand, but I mostly used my left side, which is my left side, which is my jabbing side. And I got a lot of nice cuts. Obviously, nobody got hurt. They're plastic knives, but I got a lot of nice buzzes. Bzz, bzz, bzz. And uh, I look forward to doing a knife video. I'm going to ask George to lend me those knives. I actually asked him where he bought them. I don't think he, uh, he remembered where he got them from. But really cool because I was, I've always been interested in knife fighting. Like, what would I do if somebody pulled a knife out on me? Well, thankfully, it's never happened. But just curious, where does martial arts limits? Does knife fighting techniques work? Now, me, I only believe it. If you come in, I have the knife, and we fight with the, of course, with the plastic safety knife, the, the the training knife, not a real knife, and you use one of your techniques against me live in live in action, and I'm not soft, so don't worry about you. We you can go full out, go for it, baby, go for it. 
attack me. I have a feeling that, that the boxing techniques are going to be the best. Now I'm ready to be proven wrong. If there are any knife fighting experts out there, please come to the TriStar Gym. Say, leave me a note. Write me. Say, coach, I'm a knife fighting expert. Let's do it. And we'll do it in a safe way. We'll film it. And whatever the results are, wherever the chips fall, I'm ready to accept it and make a video on it. And look, if you can teach me something about knife fighting, I will become your student. I am intrigued about knife fighting. However, I have very, very little experience with knife fighting, and I'm very excited to explore. So look forward for some knife fighting videos in the future. They're actually quite fun. We had a blast doing it, by the way, guys. It was after a sparring, and then a couple of us grabbed some knives, and we just had some fun, you know, trying to see what it was like. It was just a bunch of MMA guys with knives having fun. But actually, what was, I'll tell you one thing that was surprising to me, and that I had no idea it was going to be, there was a lot of cardio involved. Man, after the knife, I was tired. I was like, because why? I was always on edge. I was on edge, edge, edge. That this guy's gonna cut me, and it was all lots of footwork going on, lots of footwork. Something I didn't expect when I uh, <clears throat> first thought about how it would go. Okay, another super chat here. Refined BJJ or refined Sambo in Valley Tudo match? Question mark. Hickson or Khabib in Valley Tudo? Who wins? Technical analysis, please. Uh, look, generally speaking, BJJ will is more is the most refined and superior grappling art. And I only see that because if you look at all the most prestigious tournaments with the most money, it's always jiu-jitsu guys that win 99% of the time. So that's why I would say that. Hickson or Khabib, listen, you're asking me for the impossible. Obviously, Khabib's game is more modern. You know, it's more modern. So um, there's that to... Uh, in MMA, I would pick Khabib, no doubt about it. In MMA, absolutely. If we're talking about straight jiu-jitsu, I think Hickson eventually gets a submission. Do you prefer more control guards like rubber guards slash goober slash lapel or more active guards like open butterfly or half? Opinion change if you're talking gi only? That's from Mischief Mike. Mischief Mike, I will tell you something. I like control over attack initially. I like control my opponent once I have I have control, I go to my dynamic attacks. I like all the guards you mentioned. I don't believe there's one that's superior to the other. However, I do organize my game with control first and then attack. I find that's safer and less. Uh, I spend less energy. If I go for attack, 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 and I miss, I'm going to be kicking myself because I lost the position. So I always control the position. And from that watchtower, I then fire the attack. I like to be in a safe area first and then attack my opponent. That way, if I miss my attack, I could always fall back to my controls. Uh, hey, coach, is it possible to start fighting pro at 37? That's for warfare war. It depends. Are you a great athlete? How to get to ADCC level? That's from Beats of COD. Listen, I will tell you, train every single day and be super physically fit. Can you explain the 10-9 scoring system what is wrong with it? That's from Anas. Anas, we're only doing butterfly guard, my friend. You might have missed the intro. We were talking about jujitsu only, my friends. Jujitsu. Best warm ups for inverted guards. I love doing them, but my lower back hates me the next day. That's from Guam Tech. Guam Tech, you know what? Uh, I think you have to strengthen your abs and increase your mobility. Don't forget, uh, when you're upside down, what's protecting your spine? It's your abs. Okay, so make sure you do uh, a lot of good ab training. And uh, get an expert to teach you ab training. Do some research. Don't do crunches and stuff like that. Do real ab training, like gymnastics training and proper form. Inverted guard is super popular. Yes, it is typical that people complain about their back afterwards. I feel that it's a question of, lower, I shouldn't say work your abs. Pardon me. Let me rephrase that. Work your core. The whole core, including your lower back, I just feel it's a structural weakness and muscular weakness. I would say that your muscular, your muscles are just can't take the pressure. I use inverted guard every single time I roll. I actually cover it in my, uh, in my uh, Zahabi's favorite guard pass prevention. Make sure to check that out. It's also phenomenal uh, instructional on how to stop people from passing your guard. You guys don't have strong abs. I do a lot of abs. I, do, I work my abs at least three to five times a week three times minimum, but I do a lot of lifts that, I shouldn't say abs, forgive me, again, when I say abs, I, every time I use the word abs, I meant core, forget training abs, train your core, the whole thing, 360, and you won't have any back pain, back pain will be a thing of the past, what do you think about the lapel game in depth, question mark, that's from MTK, um, I think the lapel game is good after you've learned no gi, don't start jujitsu learning lapel, 
if you learn lapel for three, four years, and that's the core of your game, then I try to teach you no gi, you're going to fall apart. You're going to have a psychological, like, they have a breakdown. Breakdown is a bit of a strong word. Let's say they have a major setback psychologically. Why? They lose their confidence. Because the foundation of their game is not there. Their foundational grips are not there. Everything falls apart. Start with no gi. Do two to three years of no gi. Then learn the gi. You know, it's funny. When I was doing knife fighting, I always liken it to training with a weapon, okay? When I was, when I was doing knife fighting for the first time, I was super comfortable. Why? Because I did so much boxing in my life. That knife fighting was like boxing with an extra reach and a killer. Your jab is now is worth times a thousand. So I wasn't a fish out of water at all, at all. I bet you I will beat on the guy who trains knife fighting for 10 years. I bet you I'll beat him on my first day with a knife. Why? Because my foundation is so strong that when you give me the knife, it's an extra weapon. Same thing with grapplers. If I take somebody and I teach him no gi for three, four years, and then I give him a gi. Yes, there's going to be a period where he's going to have a hard time because of the grips. But once I teach him how to break those grips, he's going to be like, hey, everything I did in the no gi works. Plus, here's these lapel grips that are, makes my heart, my guard even harder to pass. And here's a few extra sweeps and chokes that I can use on top of what I already do. So if there's a very, if he's in a heated situation, he'll you he'll fall back on his fundamental maneuvers that still that are all still there. And if, he's, if the action slows, he'll have his extra new weapons to play around with as well. So I feel that should, oh, the foundation should always be what is universal. What will carry over to fighting, gi, and no gi. Then add on the extra weapons. But don't make your foundational moves or grips. Don't make them something that is so niche. That the guy has to be wearing a thick gi. If he's wearing a t-shirt, they don't work. If he's topless, it doesn't work. If he's wearing a flimsy little jacket, it doesn't work. I need him to be wearing a very robust and thick upper body jacket. I don't want to base my game on some on that scenario. It's a losing proposition, in my opinion. Uh, that's from Michael Castillo. I should say it's a losing proposition in most scenarios. Okay. Difference between BJJ in competition versus in the gym. Also, can you wish me luck in my first competition? Thank you. That's from M Mikel Castillo. I do wish you all the best in your competition. And listen, I feel that fitness is the major difference. What is the major difference between in gym and competition? In competition, the guy's trying to kill you. In the gym, it's more friendly. We know each other. We've rolled together before. We already know who's better. So one of them is more yielding and it's kind of more playful. In competition, the guy wants to really put you out. He wants to choke you out. He wants to dominate you. He wants to crush you. So he puts a lot more pressure on your joints. It's a lot more cardio sometimes. And I feel that the guys who do good in the gym and they don't do good in competition are guys who are not as fit as they should be. That's why I'm a big believer in fitness. I do my conditioning after practice. I feel that, hey, if I'm in the heat of battle, my knees, my back are not going to give out. Why? They're very well conditioned. That is the major difference. The intensity is higher and conditioning allows you to absorb and maintain higher levels of intensity. Okay, guys, we've been going now for one hour. I'm going to wrap this up. One or two last questions, maybe even three on guard. And let's wrap this up. This was a fun episode for you uh, like-minded jiu-jitsu nerds out there. Most impressive submission in UFC. That's from Derek Wolf. Hmm, most impressive submission. That's a hard one, man. I would have to say Mar Marillo Bustamante versus Matt Linden. Why? Because he subbed him twice. He got him in an armbar. There was a phantom tap, a clear tap, but the referee missed it. The referee broke it up. Then he was like, there was like a big confusion of what happened. Or was it at the bell? I can't remember. I'm personally, I can't remember. I think it happened at the bell, but there was a clear tap or something like that. Marillo lets go of the submission. Then they restart the fight and Marillo guillotines Matt Linden to win the UFC world title. Um, that is among, I shouldn't say it's the best submission. There were so many great submissions, but that is one that sticks with me because he had to sub him twice to win a world title. And it was a phenomenal um, a night of fighting. Uh, a phenomenal performance by Murillo Bustamante. Be honest for us, is GSP in his prime still or nah? I feel like, yes, because he is BJJ. That's from Shadow. Shadow, look, uh, I do think he's in, still in his prime. He's training every day. He just finished training right now. I just finished... Uh, we all just finished training. The guy is in incredible shape, and uh, his body's taking a much-needed rest. 
Thank you, greatest coach ever. That's from Frank you. Thank you, Frank you. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Then I have found a way to teach jiu-jitsu in a nutshell. Elaborate. Uh, coach, you told Rogan. Then I have found a way to teach jiu-jitsu in a nutshell. Elaborate. That's from Mario. Guys, this will be the last question. Guys, the greatest jiu-jitsu trainer ever is John Denehar. He has a great DVDs out there. Pick them up. They're all amazing. They're all incredible. You can find them at uh, bjjfanatics.com. His material is A++++. There's no doubt he's the greatest grappler in the world, a greatest grappling trainer in the world. How does he teach things in a nutshell? Well, he gets to the, the crux of the matter. When he teaches you anything, He'll boil it down to the most key elements. And these things are not easy to identify. He's a master of teaching you systematically. He identifies the key components and then he gives you a systematical way to train those key components. I try to mimic his teaching style. I love his teaching style. I try to mimic it in a very quick and concise manner. So my style is more quick and concise. His style is more like almost like a university course. Okay, so it depends on your personality, how you like it. Okay. He's great at identifying the key elements, and then he has a system. Why? How does he have the system? The man teaches jiu-jitsu like eight hours a day. Think about this. The man teaches jiu-jitsu eight hours a day. He's seen every he's seen every misunderstanding, every common error. He's seen so many typical um, behaviors that people have on the mat and how to correct them. So have I. Okay, I don't have as many teaching hours as him. You know, he's been in the game a lot longer than me. I try to mimic him. I try to follow in his footsteps. The man is a teaching expert. Now, I've rolled, I've trained with guys who are incredible, incredible jiu-jitsu. Then when it comes down to teach, they teach it all wrong because they don't even know how they do it. Like sometimes like I have some really good training partners and trainer and, and guys who are really good jiu-jitsu. I ask them to show me a move, to teach me a move. They teach it to me. Then I ask them, hey, can you just do it on me? And then when we go live, he does it totally different than how he showed me. And I'll point it out to him and he'll be like, yeah, I didn't even know I do it that way. That happens to me all the time, even with great wrestlers. Why? Because they don't have hours and hours of teaching. They have hours and hours of learning and tinkering, and they develop this kind of uh, instinct. Instinct. When they're in this situation, they know what to do. If you ask them about the situation, they don't really know it. And I always like to try to liken it to a language. If I asked you about all the grammar rules, you wouldn't know how to, you wouldn't know how to teach me the grammar rules, yet you can use them when I ask you to talk. You talk beautifully. You speak beautifully. You learned it intuitively. You learned it at such a young age that it's in your head. It's, re it's a reflex now. You don't even know the grammar rules. If I asked you to explain me the grammar rules, you would have no idea. Yet you abide by the rules. You're doing it intuitively. People who learn languages later on learn in life, you have to learn it analytically. It's a different, different type of learning. Don't worry about it. If you don't have a philosophy background, don't worry about it. Just one of them is instinctive and one of them is cerebral. It's more cerebral. The best teachers are the guys who learn jiu-jitsu later in life. Why? Because they have to learn it in an analytical fashion. That's a major advantage for them. And uh, oftentimes, they, they're oftentimes not always, but they're often better teachers because of it. Okay, guys, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I hope you like, share, and comment as always. And don't forget, check out my newest instructional dynamic butterfly fly guard. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did because I always enjoy this episode. Thank you all for tuning in, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.